many times repeated throughout the Church Fathers. We have the instruction that when we sin, when we fall, we must get up again. It is one of the most basic principles of the spiritual life. When we fall, get up again, start again. We may ask ourselves, how do I do this? How do I actually get up from my sins? When my life is filled with darkness, how do I try to reconcile with God? How do I turn back to Him? Well, St. Gregory Palamas, when he looks at the, the story in the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew of Jesus healing the paralytic, takes this as a model for our return to God. That story that is familiar to most of us, I'm sure, where Jesus has a man lowered to him and instead of immediately saying, your wounds, your sickness must be healed, he says, your sins are forgiven you. And of course, this causes great consternation amongst the Pharisees who question, how can anyone claim to have the authority to forgive sins? Only God can do this. Jesus is making it very clear who he is. But Jesus' healing of the paralytic, St. Gregory says to us, shows us how we can turn back to God in our lives, especially when our lives are filled with darkness. First of all, this event demonstrates, of course, Christ's power, power to both heal and to forgive. And it is vital that we understand the two together. We cannot separate healing and forgiveness. We mustn't have a legalistic understanding that has developed, it must be said, in the West of what is sin and guilt and forgiveness. The Church, Orthodoxy, has always understood sin as a spiritual sickness, something of which we need to be healed. We commit wounds to the soul when we sin. And we require inner purification. The, the healing that God gives to us is transformative. It brings a purification, an inward purification that goes hand in hand with forgiveness. St. Gregory says to us, see how St. Matthew tells us that in the beginning there it says, Jesus came to his own. Now, of course, historically Jesus was simply returning to that place that he knew. But Jesus came to his own is also talking about the Incarnation. Jesus comes to us. And the paralytic, of course, represents every one of us. Every one of us in our sin who has fallen into darkness. Every soul that must turn back to God, that requires healing and forgiveness. And St. Gregory Palamas says to us that Every soul in this condition must pass through four stages, four stages in that process of turning back to God. St. Gregory says, first of all, we must have self-condemnation. We must recognize the reality, the truth of our sin. See that we are a sinner in truth, that we have allowed darkness to grow within us. And then stage two, St. Gregory says, is confession. Not just feeling bad and even mentioning it in our prayers, but going and receiving the mystery of confession, finding forgiveness through that grace of the sacrament. And then thirdly, St. Gregory says, then we must renounce the evil that we've done, not to return to our evil once we've been forgiven in our confession, but to renounce it, turn away from it, to repent. And finally, stage four, St. Gregory says, is simply prayer. We must pray, we must join ourselves, be in union with God through prayer. St. Gregory points to us and says, notice, Jesus says to the man, take up your bed, take up your bed rise from your bed. And St. Gregory is reminding us that Christ is commanding all of us to rise up from our bed of sin, from the darkness that we have fallen into, from, from the sickness of our sin, to rise up, to get up and turn away, start again. And of course, Jesus also commands the man, take up your bed and go home. 
Now, again, historically, the man may well have gone and demonstrated to those who knew him that he had been healed. It would be a witness to the power of Christ. But as the man, the paralytic, represents each of us, we must ask ourselves, what is this command that Christ is giving us? What is my home? And of course it is the heavenly kingdom, it is the kingdom of God. Christ is saying, get up from your sickness of sin and return to the kingdom of God, enter the kingdom of God. Come to me. But even after our baptism, we know that we are sinners, we are not yet perfected. We will fall, we will sin. There will continue to be darkness within us. And these four stages of reconciliation, of turning back to God, are not just something we do once in our lives, but must become a continuous process, a pattern for living. A continuous process of self-condemnation, of confession, of turning away from sin and prayer to the very last breath of our lives. We must blame no one but ourselves for anything that we've done, anything of which we're guilty. And we must always seek reconciliation with God. We must remember the Ninevites. God sent Jonah to pronounce his sentence, his condemnation, on the evil that the Ninevites had performed. And yet, they received this message they put on sackcloth and ashes and repented. Collectively, they repented and God showed mercy. We may say, first of all, this of course is a sign of God's love and mercy, a willingness to forgive. But it's a reminder to us that when we look at our nations, when we recognize the depths that our own nation has fallen to, the depth of sin, evil, darkness, we mustn't lose hope collective repentance can bring God's mercy but of course individually repentance leads to for forgiveness and mercy we must find that that same spirit of repentance in our lives St. Gregory Palamas calls it a not just a process and not just a a life of, of, of repentance but a life of what he calls godly sorrow we must feel this godly sorrow always and it is godly because it isn't a matter of despair we mustn't fall into a worldly despair godly sorrow means maintaining hope belief trust in God's forgiveness even as we condemn ourselves even as we judge ourselves for the evil we've done knowing that if we truly repent and humble ourselves, we can be reconciled with God. God said Jonah with a message of condemnation, but Christ comes not with condemnation, but with a call to repentance, an offer of mercy and forgiveness. He says this in that same chapter in the Gospel of St. Matthew. He tells us to receive mercy, that we may be blessed, that we may be filled with life. And we mustn't despair because we must know, we must believe that God longs for our salvation even more than we do. Even more than we want and long for our own salvation. In his infinite love for us, God longs for us to be saved even more than we do. God is continuously, moment by moment, looking for an opportunity to pour his grace into our lives. Just a small opportunity, that's all we have to give him. Struggle, just a little, repent, turn away from our sins, just a little. And if we fall, if we fall back into our darkness, trust, get back up. And in that act of getting back up, in that act of seeking reconciliation with God, we're giving our Lord the opportunity to show us his mercy, to pour out his grace into our lives, moment by moment, God is seeking that small opportunity to save us. Let us offer it to him. Let us give him that opportunity to save us through our repentance, through our seeking of reconciliation. And if we do so, 
we will then hear this voice of Christ that says, get up, repent, go home, return to the kingdom of God.